Okay, in this example, we're looking at temperature effects on a simple frame. So in the picture, we have a frame which spans from A to B to C to D. So ABC is a beam of 4 metres, and BD is a column of 3 metres. Now the question is, what is the axial force in the column BD when we have a temperature, temperature change of 60 degrees centigrade? Now we find in the question that the ABC, the beam ABC, has an I value of 90 times 10 to the 6 millimetres to the 4, and the column BD has a cross-sectional area of 500 millimetres squared. Now, if we just considered column BD and said that the column alone was subject to an increase in temperature of 60 degrees centigrade, then the strain in the column would be equal to the coefficient of thermal expansion, which is a value for the material, times the change in temperature. So in this case it would be 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 60, which gives us a change in strain of 720 microstrain, which means that for this column we would have a displacement at the end of 720 times 10 to the minus 6 times 3 meters, which is 2.16 millimeters. However, the column can't move because of the beam ABC. And so the real displacement of that column BD, we could write as being equal to 2.16 minus delta millimeters. Okay? Now, to work out what the actual value is, let's consider this equation, which we all know. But the Young's modulus is stress divided by strain. We can rewrite that as P over A times the original length over the change in length. Okay? If we rearrange, if we rearrange this equation, we find that P is equal to the area times the Young's modulus times the change in length divided by the length, which for this column BD is equal to 500 millimeters squared times 200,000 times 2.16 minus delta over 3,000. That's the length of the column. Now, the beam ABC has a force applied to it, which is causing it to deflect. And so it's essentially a simply supported beam with a point load in the center. And we know from our structural mechanics class that the deflection of that beam will be PL cubed over 48 EI. And again, we have an equation with a P term in it. We could rewrite this as being P is equal to 48 EI delta over L cubed. Now the two values of delta must be the same, and the movement has to be the same at the joint B, and so we can equate the two equation that we, equations that we've just written. And so we have 500 times 200 thousand times 2.16 minus delta over 3,000 is equal to 48 times 200,000 times the I value of the column times delta divided by the length of the beam, which is 4,000 millimeters cubed. Now if we rearrange that equation, we find that delta is equal to 1.54 millimetres. Okay? And if we substitute the value of delta into either the left-hand side here or the right-hand side here, we find that P is equal to 20.7 kilonewtons.